It's an important one. I'd like to welcome my first guests, Wendy and Dean Fashion. Thank you for coming back today. Thank you for having me, Kate. Thank you for having us. I appreciate parents of Neil Fashion who bravely fought a DIPG diagnosis. And tomorrow is World DIPG Awareness Day. So I wanted you to come in because there's a number of things going on about this increasingly prevalent form of childhood brain tumor cancer. Mm -hmm. So talk with us about you know, we've talked about legislation before, but the Awareness Day, what you want folks to know. Okay. Um, well, the Awareness Day is all about um, more people learning about DIPG and what it is. It's um, childhood pediatric brain cancer. Uh, it strikes 200 to 400 children per year. And uh, median survival time for these kids is nine months. So it's from diagnosis. From diagnosis. Um, and it's usually diagnosed in four to 11 year olds. Um, our son was sort of way off um, an outlier at 19 years old. And so parents have been getting together on a national level to pass a resolution, um, HR, HRES 69 in Washington DC. And so they, I think three, four weeks ago, roughly 50 parents of D who had lost children to DIPG and some that are still fighting the battle went to Washington and, for a whole week and visited with different congressmen and senators to promote or to get them to support a resolution, Resolution 69, recognizing May 17th as DIPG Awareness Day. And yeah, we had an opportunity to speak with Senator Jack Reed about that as well about a week ago. And so what was the reception down in D.C. as you're trying to bring awareness to this? Um, it, it's, it's been tough for them. Uh, I, from what, I, what we understand, there has not been a resolution passed at the federal level for anything since 2012. And I guess they feel that if a resolution is passed, um, then everybody's going to want their resolution passed and that gets them all tied up. But this is something that uh, parents of DIPG um, patients and doctors and other, th other people feel is something that's really important to raise awareness about. Um, part of the raising awareness is, um, begins with the disease itself and diagnosis. It starts with symptoms. Um, actually, stop and say that DIPG stands for Diffused Intrinsic Pontine Glioma. And what that is, it's in the, it, because it's pontine, it's in the brainstem. It's diffused throughout the glial tissue of the brainstem. And, um, and because of that, it's inoperable. Um, it's intertwined like you know, a ball of yarn and spaghetti all together. And it's um, traditional, or, or for the past 40 years, it has been treated with radiation therapy. Uh, which uh, the National Center for Biotechnology uh, states quite plainly in its description of DIPG uh, that radiation has no survival benefit. It has some symptom uh, alleviation in 70 to 80 percent of cases. But as far as survival is concerned, which the FDA uh, considers uh, kind of the gold standard of cancer therapies, there's no survival benefit. And let's talk a little bit about Neil's fight because this was to have the right to try mm -hmm. uh, what the family wants to do, you know, as it pertains to experimental uh, approaches because where things currently stand with DIPG. Um, you know, talk with us a little bit about Neil's story and the decision to pursue, again, these experimental okay. Uh, approaches. Okay. Well, uh, when, when we first discovered that Neil had this disease, we did a lot of research quickly and we found out about radiation. We found out about immunotherapy clinical trials that were starting to happen. Uh, we found out about something called convection enhanced uh, delivery of chemotherapy by putting a little hole in the back of the head and putting in a little straw and actually delivering chemo directly to that area. Uh, short, uh, long story short, nothing to date at that time had shown any, any survival benefit quote unquote, uh, and Neil was like, if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna be gone in three months, which is basically what they told him, his prognosis was three months, I wanna try something. I mean, I'd like to try for the brass ring if there's any out there. So we did a lot of research on that too, and we found a brass ring. Uh, it's very controversial, but the Brzezinski Clinic has a handful of DIPG survivors, and we know for a fact that's not make-believe. We ended up speaking with two over the course of Neil's treatment, and we know of another one at least. Uh, that's not to say everyone was cured that's been treated there because there's a lot of genes that are involved in DIPG. Not every patient has the same configuration of genes that are malfunctioning. And, you know, it's, 
it's not a sure thing by any means, but he's had results. Neil himself survived for nine months longer than his prognosis. So that, that in the FDA's terms of survival is, is fairly significant. And so there's that. There's also a clinic in Monterey, Mexico that's been having very good results in terms of survival for months longer than the prognosis with a combination of immunotherapy and a, a cocktail of, of chemotherapies delivered through an intra-arterial shunt of some sort. I'm not quite sure about that, but they snake it up through, the, through your groin and all the way up to the tumor. And also there's, there's a lot of evidence that uh, medical marijuana has had terrific benefits for, for people with cancer and brain cancer uh, patients as, as well. The DIPG, because of its multifaceted nature, really screams out for a multifaceted approach. And you know, we think that anyone who's willing to step up and experiment, when they're told they've got three months, they've got nothing, less, nothing to lose, and they want to step up and experiment, they should be encouraged and supported as much as possible. Whereas we got shut down for a while and had to go to court to, to get back our right to try. I mean, yeah, for Neil. But. And at the state level, we've talked about this, the right to try legislation to allow families to have this and not be stopped from pursuing these options. And currently here in Rhode Island, looking to still have something passed, yes? Yeah. Well, they're, they're supposedly voting maybe right as we're speaking with you right now. Uh, the House passed the bill last year unanimously. It ran into a roadblock in the Senate, and we're, we're crossing our fingers that we get similar response from the House and that the, the Senate has a, an epiphany uh, because it's really something. It's a, it's a rights issue, uh, and anyone who's facing death square in the face should be able to do whatever it is they, they think is best for their chances. And you've been such a strong advocate since the passing of Neil. What do you tell families and when you hear that they get diagnosis for their children with DIPG? It's all you can do is, you know, be encouraging. Tell them to stay strong. Um, it's it's hard to know what to say. It is really, really difficult to know what to say. Yeah, even having gone through it, I mean, it's devastating. It's a devastating thing to find out. And uh, yeah, just be supportive. Let them know you're there. You know, a lot of social media outreach is going on, and that's a terrific thing. And I know. Yeah, I yeah I'm, I'm involved in it. on Facebook. There's a number of DIPG focused face Facebook pages for advocacy for people looking for support while they're going through treatment. And people get on there and they share their stories. They ask their questions of the community that's on there. Yeah. You know, have you tried this? We're looking into this. And people will just, you know, start, you know, the comments just go bing, 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 bing. There's just a lot of active conversation going on there, which um, it's great to have that kind of support. It really is. And raising awareness, of course, some of the goals I'm sure are to get more research funding. Absolutely. For DIPG. Just we get more research funding because it's tough to put an exact number, but it, it sounds like dozens, if not several dozens of genes are involved in mm -hmm. DIPG. It's like, uh, it's a cascading failure. And, and, and it and morphs as it goes, as it, it develops. So more genes can turn on and off as you're going along. So it's constantly but changing. But anybody who comes up with a therapy that actually has a fairly high success rate is going to be curing a lot of other cancers. Mm -hmm. It's an experimental opportunity. Uh, and, and that's another big reason I think that awareness is important. It's not something that just because it happens to a few people, meh, those few people could be the key to discovering a cure that's going to have a much wider application. Now, Dean, you're wearing a Camp Sunshine hat. Do you want to oh, yeah. talk with us a little bit about that? Uh, Camp Sunshine is a, a marvelously supportive place for, for families who uh, are dealing, uh, first and foremost, for, for families who have a child who is suffering from a terminal illness, it could be cancer, it could be something Life else. Life-threatening, yeah. Life-threatening illness. They, they offer the opportunity to come to camp for a week and, and they have special counselors for all the kids and they have doctors on staff and, and, and it's basically all the needs of the family are taken care of for that week. And it's, you know, when you're dealing with something as traumatic as a, t a child who's, who's, who's fighting that sort of thing, to have an opportunity like that to be with others who are in a, a similar boat, but also have your entertainment. And, and fun. And, and fun. Camp. And a chance to <laughs> laugh and just connect with people. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, they also have a bereavement camp, which we were fortunate enough to attend after you've lost a, a, a child. And, and uh, Again, it was an opportunity to, to connect with people who've been through similar things, and it's, it's tough to, I mean, you know, as you hear, oh, you, you don't know what I've been through. Well, it's, it's not that bad, but you can imagine it's, it sucks. And uh, 
You know, it's like having part of your root structure pulled out. You know, a part of our future is gone. It's not like losing a parent or a grandparent or something like that. So that Camp Sunshine is a very special place to help people who've really gone through that s this uh, situation have a chance to drop all their guard and, and communicate and relate to each other. So tomorrow is DIPG Awareness Day. In Rhode Island. In Rhode Island. In Rhode Island. What's the day look like for you tomorrow? Um, I don't know. We just we're gonna be we'll beat the bushes as best we can. Yeah. See, you know, we 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 sent out press kits all over the place, and we thank you very much for the opportunity to come and speak with you. And if we have an opportunity to speak with you know a, a radio show host or something like that, we'll, we we'll that. jump on it. We've and, got the uh, papers. They know, all come several, out. A lot several of them local Thursdays. papers are gonna be you know covering it. I don't know. If Projo picked it up or not, uh, but I mean. But you're here. We're letting folks know yeah. again Absolutely. about the Awareness Day. And yes. again, multifaceted, right to try legislation here in Rhode Island, as you said, before the Senate as we speak. No, no house. It, well, house. 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 It's yeah. the House today. And then, the we're looking, and then the we're Senate. looking for the Senate. No. And then, of course, at that national level, raising the awareness, having gone to D.C. and speaking about the resolution process, but saying yeah. this is why we want to increase this recognition. And again, steps being taken to address the root cause of it. And as you said, how it could have a cascading effect and impact so many other Absolutely. cancers as Absolutely. well. And but yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of research going on that's been funded by DIPG parents. It's really this one thing I didn't mention earlier that I really want to mention. Wow. The funding isn't coming from federal funding. It's coming from parents who have started all kinds of private foundations. And it's just amazing what they have accomplished in, I think, the past 10 years. So, and, and the research that's coming out of the things they've invested into about DNA analysis, tissue analysis, it's, it's, they've really made a lot of headway. It's very encouraging. Well, I appreciate your taking the time to come here. I appreciate your advocacy, letting folks know we'll have more information, more links. Again, DIPG Awareness Day here in Rhode Island tomorrow, May 17th. Again, remembering Neil Fashion, Wendy and Dean, thank you for taking the time to come in today. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center.